In the world right now, there is a very famous boxing tournament called Megalobox that is about to take place. Fighters participating in Megalobox will wear a support device called gear, and the person who organizes Megalobox is female president Yukiko of the wealthy Shirado Concern Corporation. The main character, Joe, is sitting in the garage watching information about the Megalo box. The boss told Joe to participate in that boxing tournament, but Joe couldn't because he was not a legal citizen of this country. People who live outside the city, like Joe, are called free people, so they are not controlled by any government, but they do not have citizenship. Joe is currently working as a boxer in an underground arena for gangsters to bet on. He had just gone to work when the trainer named Nanbu asked him to borrow some money because he had just lost a bet. Joe often has to play matches arranged by the organizers to cheat viewers out of their betting money. He was already feeling so depressed because he always had to pretend to lose in the ring. But for an illegal citizen like Joe, this was the only job to make money. Before entering the ring, Joe was given a headset to listen to Nanbu's instructions. He also wore gear to support his fighting, like in the Megalo Box Tournament. But the audience and Joe's opponents felt very surprised because his gear was so shabby. Immediately afterward, Joe's opponent rushed up to attack him with his modern gear. Joe gently pushed his arm aside and began to counterattack. But before he could knock him down, the whistle ended the round. After witnessing Joe's performance, more people bet on him. Joe said that if he fought seriously, the guy would be knocked out in one punch. But when it came to the second half, Joe had to pretend to lose so that the organizers would win all the money from those who bet on him. After the recent mission, Nanbu also earned a little money to pay off his debt, but Joe was not interested in this job, so he took a motorbike to ride around. Meanwhile, female president Yukiko is watching the stadium construction process for the Megalo Box Tournament, and accompanying Yukiko is a silver-haired fighter named Yuri. Right after that, Yukiko was walking across the street when she was almost hit by Joe, but Joe promptly dodged to the side and crashed straight into the sidewalk, so Yukiko was still unharmed. Seeing Yukiko approaching to apologize, Joe scolded her for passing by without looking. Yukiko gave Joe a business card and told him to call her if he needed compensation. But when he realized she was the one organizing the Megalo Box tournament, Joe didn't need it. Yukiko was about to leave when Joe suddenly said that her Megalo Box tournament was just trash, so Yuri quickly stepped up and demanded a match with Joe to protect his master. But before the two of them could even begin, Yukiko told Yuri to return with her. The next morning, Joe continued to return to the underground ring to fight a few arranged matches as usual. He and Nanbu waited for quite a while and still wouldn't see their opponent appear. However, Yuri suddenly steps onto the stage with a set of modern gear integrated into his body. As soon as they saw Yuri, everyone was very surprised because he was the champion of the Megalo Box Tournament. Yuri said he came here to settle last night's dispute with Joe. Nanbu tried to stop the fight because he thought Joe couldn't fight Yuri. But Joe angrily punched Nanbu and happily accepted his challenge. Everyone was excited to buy tickets to bet on Yuri in this match. As soon as the match started, Joe rushed up to attack Yuri but was unable to hit him. Yuri even just gave Joe a light punch, causing Joe a slight injury to his face. Just then, Yuri said that he would defeat Joe with just one hand. Just as he stated, he beat Joe to a pulp even though he only used his left hand. Nanbu told Joe to stay still as soon as he saw him being knocked to the floor by Yuri. But he still stubbornly stood up and continued the unfinished match. However, this time Joe successfully dodged Yuri's left hand attack. He threw a punch at Yuri's face, causing Yuri to use his right hand to block the blow. Yuri now truly recognizes Joe's abilities, so he will fight with both hands to make Joe understand what Megalo Box really is. Joe was rushing to attack Yuri when he punched him with a powerful punch. Yuri's punch caused Joe to lie on the floor and gradually lose consciousness, so the referee declared Yuri the winner. However, when Yuri was about to leave the underground ring, Joe suddenly stood up and wanted to continue fighting. But Yuri refused because he did not want to fight a weak person like Joe. Yuri said that if Joe wanted to continue fighting, he would have to participate in the Megalo Box Tournament, and then meet him in the finals. Joe took a motorcycle to ride around after being humiliatingly defeated by Yuri. He decided that he would participate in the Megalo Box Tournament to fight Yuri again. At the same time, Yukiko also discovered that Yuri went to the underground arena to fight Joe, so Yukiko reminded Yuri that he was not allowed to go to the underground arena like before. As soon as he returned to the underground arena, Joe immediately asked Nanbu to find a way to help him participate in the Megalo Box Tournament. But Nanbu said that was impossible because Joe was not a legal citizen here. Not to mention the fact that only the four strongest fighters have the right to participate in the Megalo Box Tournament. 
Bamboo told Joe to give up that wishful thinking and go prepare for his upcoming match. According to the arrangements of the organizers, today Joe would have to lose in the fifth round. But Joe did not listen to Nanbu's words and instead defeated his opponent with just one punch. Right after that, Nanbu was taken to meet the boss of this ring, named Fujimaki, to apologize because Joe did not follow the arrangement. Nanbu was forced to work for Fujimaki to pay off the debt he borrowed from him. So he was so afraid of him that he had to kowtow and apologize until he was injured. But he still wanted to take his remaining eye to punish him. Seeing that there was no other choice, Nanbu suddenly said that he would find a way to bring Joe into the Megalo Box tournament. After Joe wins that tournament, he will pay all his debts. Fujimaki also felt a little interested when he saw Nanbu's determination. So he ordered someone to make a fake citizen identification card for Joe so he could participate in that tournament. After receiving Joe's fake citizen identification card, Nanbu went to register him to compete at Megalo Box. Joe is currently ranked the lowest, as this is his first time participating in an official tournament. Joe and Nanbu will temporarily live on a boat until the Megalo Box tournament takes place. Joe clearly understands that he must make it to the finals to have a chance to face Yuri. But Nanbu tells Joe not to pay attention to Yuri but to focus on defeating the opponents in front of him to climb the rankings. Nanbu says that the gear Yuri is using is the most advanced type made by the Shirado Concern Corporation. That gear was attached directly to Yuri's body as a part of him. Meanwhile, a group of homeless kids planned to steal things from the market, and while the camera store owner wasn't paying attention, they took away his cameras. Joe and Nanbu went to a store to buy replacement parts for Joe's gear, but Nanbu suddenly became happy when he saw a gear made from titanium alloy, and the store security guard said that this is the first model produced by Shirado Concern Corporation. Right after that, the kids from earlier went to this store to sell the cameras they had just stolen, and the store owner paid them some sweets as wages. But a boy named Sashio was very angry because the store owner had missed a piece of candy. Seeing that, the store owner took out a knife to threaten the boy, so Joe had to quickly stop the store owner before things got worse. The kids quickly left, and Joe was cut on the nose. Joe and Nanbu returned to the boat located under the bridge. He had to work hard to train Joe because his first opponent was also quite strong. While going down to the riverbank to play in the water with his friends, Sashio discovered that Joe was planning to join Megalo Box, so Sashio asked Joe to take him to Megalo Box with him. But Joe didn't want to bring a kid like Sashio, so he left in anger. The next morning, Sashio's friends came to tell Joe that the boy had been locked up by the spare parts store owner because he tried to steal his Titan alloy gear. The boy told his friends to give that gear to Joe so he could compete in the Megalo Box tournament. Meanwhile, the store owner was ordering his security guard to torture Sashio to force him to hand over the gear. But Joe suddenly rode his motorcycle inside and let the motorcycle fall on the guard's face. However, the security guard remained unharmed after the recent collision. When Nanbu and the kids drove up, Joe also successfully rescued Sashio. Immediately after that, Joe took off his jacket to reveal a set of titanium gear inside. But just after being hit by a guard's attack, his gear was broken into many pieces. However, Joe decided that he would take down the guard with his bare hands. He ran straight towards the guard and punched him down, much to everyone's surprise. Joe had a different view of Sashio after this incident, so he decided to take Sashio to Megalo Box to be his assistant. A few days later, Joe went to the Megalo Box tournament ring to participate in his first qualifying match. His opponent is a pretty strong fighter, ranked 185th, named Samejima. But Joe competes with him without using any gear. It turned out that on the night before the competition, Nanbu asked Joe to compete without using gear because if he did so, strong opponents as well as the media would pay more attention to Joe. If this plan is followed, he will be promoted faster to reach the finals of Megalo Box. Everyone was very surprised to see Joe not using gear. Samejima and the audience think that Joe is looking down on this tournament. The referee said that Megalo Box's rules do not require competitors to use gear. The match began when Joe avoided all of Samejima's punches and punched him in the face repeatedly. Samejima cannot move flexibly due to the gear he is wearing, but he only hit Joe once, causing Joe to fall to the ground. Below the ring, Nanbu and Sashio were very nervous and kept calling for Joe to get up. Luckily, Joe was able to get up before the count of 10. Joe and Samejima then rested in the middle of the round. But Joe's head was so dizzy that he couldn't see anything clearly. The audience laughed at them when they saw Nanbu and Sashio's clumsiness. The match continues. Joe entered the ring very heavily. Joe tries to run around the ring so Samejima can't hit him. When he caught Joe, Samejima angrily threw him to the ground and punched him hard. 
but Samejima was warned by the referee because his wrestling action violated the rules. At break time, Nanbu realized that Joe was afraid of fighting without gear, so he told Joe to try to find a way to control his fear. After listening to his advice, Joe finally regained his composure. Right then, Joe remembered what he learned from Nanbu and moved like a real dancer. Samejima tried to attack Joe but was unable to hit his body. Joe could even easily throw a terribly strong punch, causing him to fall down. When he saw that Samejima had been defeated, the referee immediately declared Joe the winner. The surrounding audience was very surprised and then stood up to congratulate Joe. That afternoon, they happily returned home after their first win at Megalo Box. During the time that followed, Joe continuously defeated many other opponents to increase his rankings. Joe quickly became famous for not using gear. However, with his current position, Joe certainly could not reach the finals of the tournament, so Nanbu asked a reporter to arrange for Joe to fight a highly ranked boxer. But Nanbu was surprised to learn that the boxer about to fight Joe was his former student. Nanbu's former student was a soldier named Aragaki. While on a mission, Aragaki was hit by a bomb, causing serious injuries to his body. Nanbu seemed very happy to see Aragaki again because Nanbu thought he had died after that accident. But he did not expect that Aragaki was now a 17th ranked fighter. However, Aragaki said that he would destroy Joe in the upcoming match, making Nanbu very surprised. Aragaki wants to take back what Nanbu took from him before. After hearing Aragaki say that, Nanbu suddenly felt a little worried. So Nanbu asked Joe to skip the upcoming match because he thought he couldn't defeat Aragaki. When they looked up information online, they suddenly discovered that Aragaki had lost his legs when he was hit by a bomb. Nanbu was very surprised to learn that Aragaki played with his prosthetic legs. Joe still refused to listen to Nanbu because he really wanted to fight a strong fighter like him. In the following days, Joe persistently practiced to prepare for the upcoming match. Aragaki and Sashio told Joe that Aragaki had participated in Megalo Box 10 years ago, but he had to give up his playing career when he received a call to military service. However, as soon as he returned, Aragaki easily climbed to 17th place with his injured body. All of Aragaki's opponents were punched and sent to the hospital by him. Meanwhile, Aragaki is training extremely intensely because he is also looking forward to fighting Joe. But Aragaki's current coach advises him not to fight Joe because he clearly understands that Aragaki is just feeling bad. Jealous of Nanbu's current student. It turns out that when Aragaki went into the army, Nanbu promised that he would keep their practice room intact until he returned. But when Aragaki returned, he found that Nanbu had left it an abandoned house, so from then on, he always felt extremely angry at Nanbu for deceiving him. While at home, Sashio wondered why Nanbu didn't recognize Aragaki as a top fighter in the Megalo Box tournament. Nanbu couldn't answer because he thought he had died while serving as a soldier. He told Joe that Aragaki could switch from defense to attack very quickly, so he also trained Joe on how to balance defense and attack. The next morning, Joe and Aragaki went to the stadium very early to prepare for their match. Nanbu went to ask Aragaki to go easy on Joe because the person he hated was him, not Joe. But Aragaki still didn't care and coldly went straight into the ring to start the match. When the whistle sounded, Joe and Aragaki stepped into the middle of the ring and continuously threw punches at each other's faces. But unlike Joe's previous opponents, Aragaki can move extremely fast. The match only started for one minute, and Joe was knocked to the floor by him. However, when Nanbu showed concern, Joe slowly stood up and continued to face Aragaki. But Joe still couldn't find a way to counterattack Aragaki because he struck too quickly. Nanbu realized that Aragaki had taken advantage of the springs under his prosthetic leg to be able to move more smoothly. Aragaki threw punches so quickly that Joe could not react in time, and Aragaki was about to punch him in the face when the referee blew the whistle to end the first round. Nanbu told Joe to give up this match because he thought Joe couldn't defeat Aragaki. But Joe twisted Nanpu's arm and said he wouldn't give up until he defeated him. As the match continued, Joe tried to move the way Nanbu had taught him. Seeing that, Aragaki became extremely angry and punched Joe down. Joe slowly stood up, like before, and continued to fight. During the halftime break, Aragaki remembered the time when he was a student of Nanbu. It was Nanbu who taught him how to control the balance between defense and attack, like Joe had just done. Nanbu thought that Aragaki was trying to defeat Joe right in front of him. But after a while of fighting, Joe suddenly realized that Aragaki had no intention of taking revenge on Nanbu. The third round had just begun when Aragaki continuously threw punches as strong as hammers into Joe's face. But Joe still did not give up, no matter how many times Aragaki punched him down. After getting used to Aragaki's speed, Joe was able to hit him once. Joe's punch just now was so strong that Aragaki had to try very hard to get up. 
Joe can now attack Aragaki instead of having to defend, like before. Nanbu is very happy to see that Joe has begun to apply the things he taught. Joe continuously threw powerful punches, causing Aragaki to defend. But Aragaki still refused to lose to Joe, so he tried to strike back at him. The two of them had an evenly matched match in front of the cheers of all the spectators. However, while the two of them were punching, the referee suddenly blew the whistle to end the round. During the halftime break, Aragaki surrendered because he no longer had the strength to continue fighting. So the referee declared Joe the winner, much to the joy of Nanbu and Sashio. It turns out that Aragaki decided to retire after this match because his health was no longer good, so he wanted to become a stepping stone for Joe to help him advance. Aragaki said that he had never really resented Nanbu until now, he was even very grateful to Nanbu for bringing him to this wonderful boxing sport. Meanwhile, Shirado Concern Group has selected three fighters to reach the semi-finals of Megalo Box, but the media is only interested in a fighter who does not use gear like Joe. Yuri now also knows that Joe has just defeated Aragaki to climb to 17th place in the rankings. After defeating Aragaki, Joe's name spread to every corner, and he has now become the pride of the free people living outside the city. Meanwhile, Yukiko's older brother, Mikio, is also preparing to have a match with a top 4 fighter in the rankings. Nanbu was standing outside the arena observing the match when Yukiko suddenly passed by them. So Nanbu conveniently said that Yukiko would definitely arrange to bring her brother to the semi-finals. But Yukiko said she is not biased against anyone because Megalo Box is a fair tournament. Mikio uses gear that can automatically analyze all of his opponent's moves, and that gear will automatically fight for Mikio without him having to spend any effort. So after just a few rounds, he was able to easily defeat the top four boxers. Joe will next have to fight Mikio to decide which of them will make it to the semi-finals. Joe wanted to practice thoroughly before their match but his body still hasn't fully recovered since the match with Aragaki. Meanwhile, the members of Shirado Concern want to bring Mikio to the semi-finals without having to fight Joe because, after all, he is a key member of this rich and powerful corporation. However, Yukiko disagreed with that idea because she thought it was unfair. But actually, Yukiko is afraid that her brother will take her president's seat if he wins the Megal box. Yukiko is planning to sell gear sets produced by Shirado Concern to the military to use as weapons. Yukiko is the creator of the body-integrated hijab that Yuri is wearing, and Yukiko's gear was a huge success, so she was let by her grandfather inherit the position of president of Shirado Concern Corporation. While Mikio failed with his automatic gear, Mikio realizes that Yukiko does not want him to become Megalo Box's champion because, if so, it would prove that Mikio's automatic gear is superior to her own. But Mikio is determined that he will win the championship and the position of president of the corporation. Since becoming famous, every day there has been a whole group of people wanting to meet Joe, and Joe has tried to practice very hard to prepare for the upcoming match with Mikio. But everyone still seemed a bit worried because Mikio's gear could read his opponent's movements. Finally, the day of the Megalo Box boxing match between Joe and Mikio has arrived. Joe was determined to win this match and go straight to the final round to rematch Yuri, but his group was going to the ring when they suddenly saw Mikio standing at the entrance. It turned out that Mikio discovered that Joe was using a fake ID card to participate in the competition, so he forced Joe to give up this tournament if he didn't want it to be exposed. Joe, along with everyone, was very angry after being so blatantly threatened by Mikio. But they still had to give up the Megalo Box Tournament to protect Joe's reputation. Joe has abandoned the Megalo Box Tournament, so Mikio will be the last fighter to reach the semi-finals. Joe's group returned to the boat on the river to plan their next move. Nanbu felt a bit strange because Mikio could easily eliminate Joe by letting everyone know about him using a fake ID, so he thought Mikio was afraid of something about Joe that he didn't want others to know. There were only a few hours left before the ceremony to announce the four semi-finalists, so Nanbu asked boss Fujimaki to use his connections to investigate Mikio. Fujimaki said that the fake ID he created could not have been detected by Mikio. Mikio simply thought that they were not citizens of this city because they were very famous in the underground arena. So Fujimaki is sure that Mikio does not have any evidence to accuse Joe. Fujimaki said that he knew a guy who often went to the underground arena to bet named Mizuhara. Mizuhara used to be an engineer working at Shirado Concern Corporation. Right after that, Fujimaki sent someone to bring Mizuhara back to ask him for some secret information inside Shirado Concern. Mizuhara said he was once hired by Shirado Concern to create new generation gear. Mikio also participated in Shirado Concern's project to develop new gear types, but in the end, 
The gear developed by Yukiko was chosen as the official model because Mikio's automatic gear encountered too many errors in combat. Mikio now wants to defeat Yuri to prove that his gear is superior. Mizuhara also said that Mikio's gear can only read the movements of opponents who use gear, so Nanbu realized that Mikio cannot defeat opponents who do not use gear like Joe. Nanbu also knew that Yukiko did not want to let her brother reach the semi-finals, so he went alone to meet Yukiko to ask Joe for a rematch with Mikio. But she immediately refused because Joe had automatically given up in the previous match with Mikio. Joe and Sashio are now at home, waiting to see if Nanbu can convince Yukiko or not. Nanbu threatens that if she doesn't, he will spread the news that the Shirado Concern Corporation cheated to get Mikio into the semi-finals. But Yukiko locked Nanbu in a room and went to the opening ceremony of the semi-finals. While practicing, Joe saw the ceremony's fireworks going off in the city. Nanbu called to inform Sashio that he had failed to convince Yukiko, but Joe had now climbed on his motorbike and headed straight to the opening ceremony. Yuri and two Western fighters were selected to enter the Megalo Box semi-finals. Yukiko was preparing to announce Mikio as the fourth fighter chosen when Joe suddenly drove up. Joe asked Yukiko to let him spar with Mikio. As soon as he saw Joe, Mikio despised him like a dog and told the security guard to kick him out. However, Yukiko also knows that her brother threatened Joe with something to make him give up the last match, so Yukiko will reorganize the match between Joe and Mikio to choose the fourth fighter. Mikio angrily realized that Yukiko would do anything to prevent his success. Immediately after that, the audience surrounded the Megalo Box Arena to watch the match between Joe and Mikio. Residents outside the city were also watching their match shown on TV, but unlike previous thoughts, Joe encountered quite a few difficulties when having to fight Mikio. Nanbu realized that Mikio must have upgraded his gear with new features. It can now read the movements of fighters who do not use gear like Joe. Joe used the techniques he had recently learned from Nanbu to attack Mikio. But Mikio's gear activated the motion copying function to help him knock Joe out with his own moves. During the break, everyone discovered that Mikio's gear had the ability to copy. The longer the match lasts, the stronger it will become. In the third round, the situation remained unchanged compared to before. Joe was beaten by Mikio and his automatic gear until he fell out of the ring. But Joe is determined that he will win because Mikio's current power comes from the gear, and not from himself. Mikio was extremely annoyed because Joe kept getting up after being punched down by him. Mikio and everyone else were surprised to see Joe standing still and refusing to take a stance. But what's even more strange is that Mikio can't hit Joe right now. His gear suddenly stopped working and refused to attack anymore. It turned out that when Joe stood still, Mikio's gear thought he was planning something, so it paused to calculate his next attack. Joe said that he would have to take down Mikio in one hit to avoid his gear counterattacking. Right after that, Joe used a defenseless move to deal with Mikio's gear. But the surrounding audience thought that Joe had fought hard, so he was like that while Nanbu and Sashio were waiting for Joe's finishing blow. Seeing that his gear refused to attack, Miko turned it off and then angrily rushed up to attack Joe. But Joe promptly avoided that attack and then threw a hook punch to his jaw. After being hit by Joe's punch, Mikio fell to the floor and lost consciousness. The referee declared Joe the winner before the cheers of thousands of spectators. According to the original contract, Joe will be the fourth boxer selected to enter the semi-finals of Megalo Box. Mikio accepted his defeat and showed respect to Joe while leaving. Joe also saw Yuri and Yukiko watching his match all this time. Yuri felt extremely excited because he was finally about to have a rematch with Joe in this world-class boxing tournament. That night, everyone in the neighborhood held a very lavish party to celebrate Joe's victory. But he couldn't attend the party because he had to stay in his room to recover. Everyone was eating and drinking happily when Fujimaki suddenly came and called Nanbu out to talk. It turns out that three months ago, Nanbu had to make a deal with Fujimaki so that he would agree to help Joe enter the Megalo Box tournament. He wanted Joe to pretend to lose in the semi-finals to trick the audience into betting money. If Fujimaki can arrange the results of the upcoming match, he will earn a lot of money. Nanbu could not refuse Fujimaki because he still owed him a large sum of money. When Joe learned that Nanbu had been taking advantage of him for a long time, he immediately punched him in anger and then rode away on his motorcycle. Even little Sashio was extremely disappointed when he realized that Nanbu had deceived them. The next day, Shirado Konzern Group held a press conference for the four strongest fighters, but Joe did not come to the press conference. Instead, he went to the old car repairman's house to watch TV. Meanwhile, Nanbu forced Sashio to go somewhere with him. Nanbu knows that Sashio is also using Joe for personal purposes, not just him. 
Engineer Mizuhara told Nanbu that Sashio's father used to work for the Shirado Concern Corporation. But Yukiko's grandfather had someone kill the boy's father to protect the company's secrets. So after his mother passed away, Sashio asked to follow Joe to Megalobox to find a way to avenge his father. Just then, Nanbu suddenly brought Sashio outside a mansion where Yukiko was staying. It seemed like she was organizing a very sumptuous party to invite her business partners. Nanbu gave Sashio a small knife and told him to take Yukiko's life to avenge his father. But after a moment of thought, the boy did not have enough courage to do that cruel thing. Nanbu clearly understood that if Joe refused to participate in Fujimaki's arrangement, he would definitely eliminate them. So Nanbu asked Yukiko to take care of Sashio until the Megalo Box tournament ended. When she learned that her grandfather had murdered Sashio's father, she immediately agreed to make up for the boy. The next day, the first semi-final between Yuri and a boxer from Spain named Pepe began. Yukiko invited a number of representatives from the military to watch the match to see the performance of the gear that Yuri was using. Just entering the fight, Pepe continued to attack Yuri with his extremely powerful punches. He looked quite confused when he saw Yuri able to counterattack so easily. The two of them had an evenly matched match in front of the cheers of thousands of spectators. But Yuri successfully threw a hook punch from below the jaw to defeat Pepe. After defeating Pepe, Yuri became the first boxer to reach the final round. That night, Joe was standing by the river enjoying the breeze when he suddenly saw Yuri also taking his dog for a walk. When he saw Yuri coming towards him, Joe complimented his hook punch from the morning. But Joe is still determined to get through the semi-finals to have a real match with Yuri. The next morning, Nanbu sent a headset to the car repairman's place and asked him to give it to Joe. Joe grabbed it and raced straight to the arena for his semi-final match. In the semi-finals, Joe will have to face a boxer from America named Glenn. Joe agreed to carry out the largest match-fixing deal in Fujimaki's history. Nanbu was sitting in a VIP room with Fujimaki, waiting for the match to start. Right after that, Glenn slowly entered the ring on a very cool gold-plated car, and everyone was surprised to see Joe enter the ring with his old gear. But they thought that Joe put on the gear because Glenn was much stronger than his previous opponents. When Nanbu saw Joe like that, he understood that he had agreed to follow Fujimaki's plan. Yuri couldn't believe that Joe had given up his pride to wear gear. Meanwhile, Sashio and his friends were standing outside, watching the match. The boy ran away angrily because he did not expect Joe to agree to follow Fujimaki's plan. During the first minutes of the match, Joe continuously had to run away from Glenn's attacks, helping him hold out in the first half. Fujimaki realized that Joe was trying to act to avoid being recognized by the audience. The second half had just begun when Joe immediately rushed forward to attack Glenn. Nanbu says that Joe must survive the second round for the plan to succeed. So Joe tried to keep his distance from Glenn and continuously punched him in the face. When the second round ended, the number of people betting on Joe increased very quickly. Sashio was on his way home when he suddenly felt regretful about taking advantage of Joe for his revenge purposes. Nanbu told Joe that after this mission ended, he and he would be free, but Nanbu was confused when Fujimaki said they would have to work for him forever. However, when Joe was being cornered by Glenn, Sashio suddenly ran straight into the ring and the boy told Joe to fight for himself. But Joe fell after enduring a series of powerful punches from Glenn. Yuri suddenly appeared in the ring to encourage Joe to stand up. Nanbu is fighting with Fujimaki's subordinates because he doesn't want to do this dirty job anymore. He told Joe to win this match to fulfill his dream. Hearing that, Joe took off his gear to have a real battle with Glenn. He successfully knocked Glenn down with a punch to the face. The referee declared Joe the winner. Sashio happily ran to the ring to hug Joe. Yuri recognizes Joe as the strongest fighter he has ever met. Right after that, Joe and Sashio ran to the VIP room to save Nanbu. But Fujimaki took Nanbu's remaining eye to clear his debt. He let Joe take Nanbu away and said that from now on they no longer owe each other. Yukiko has signed a business contract with the military. The army is eager to see Yuri win the championship with that gear. But Yuri suddenly wants to take off his gear to have a fair fight with Joe. Yukiko was very frightened when she heard that from Yuri. But Yuri said that this was his wish and left Shirado Concern immediately. Joe is feeling extremely excited right now because he finally gets to fight Yuri. Nanbu asked Uragaki to be his practice opponent instead of having to practice with a punching bag. Meanwhile, Yuri drove to a wooden house deep in a forest to find Mikio. Yuri asked Mikio to remove the gear from his body, surprising him. Mikio told Yuri that removing the gear from his body would cause him a lot of pain. But Yuri still decided to discuss it because he wanted to have a fair match with Joe. 
Yukiko also went to Mikio's house after he removed the gear from Yuri's body. Right now, Yuri is still unconscious in bed, and it will take another day to wake up. But a few days later, Yukiko saw Yuri rushing into training as soon as he could move. Meanwhile, Joe and everyone are enjoying their day off before the final match. Yukiko came to tell Joe that Yuri had taken off her gear to fight him, so Joe was very excited and continued to practice to prepare for the final match with Yuri. Finally, the day of the climactic match between Joe and Yuri has arrived. Nanbu gave Joe a lucky charm to help him avoid Yuri's punches. Right after that, everyone around the ring was very surprised to see Yuri also not wearing gear to fight. Yuri's body now had intricate scars after removing the gear. Joe and Yuri had an evenly matched match that could not be decided, but Yuri was still slightly better than Joe. Because he had a faster strike speed, he was able to knock Joe down into the ring with a powerful punch. However, Joe still managed to stand up before the count reached 10. After exchanging punches for a while, Joe successfully punched Yuri right in the face. The people watching were very excited because of the drama of the match between the two of them. They fought continuously until the 13th round but still could not finish this match. So together, they launched a decisive blow to end this long battle. Upon hearing the results of the match, Yukiko suddenly shed tears. Joe and Yuri were both seriously injured, so their final match was temporarily cancelled. A year later, Nanbu and some kids in Sashio's group built a small practice room. Yuri lost both legs after the Megalo Box final match with Joe. Yukiko organized another Megalo Box tournament without using gear. Joe has now stopped competing and works as a shipper to make a living, but he will still have to face many difficulties ahead.